Welcome back students. I hope you are now geared for the second round which would be the interview skills. But before we really move on to the interview skills, there were certain things which I wanted to talk about or rather continue in the group discussion. So we would talk about, we would just summarize things out there because post the group discussion comes the interview skills in a selection process. Normally you have a group discussion and then you have a selection interview for uh, the selection process. So what one of the centers had raised the issue, how should we bring the participants who do not talk into the group discussion? And Professor Fatak had given us a wonderful solution for it, that you need to prepare beforehand for that particular situation. However, if it is a group which is not known, wherein you need to bring others. Now what happens? If there aren't very many participants, your points get exhausted. That is why also it is important to bring other participants into the discussion. Over there, what you could do is, you could, maybe they are very timid, but you cannot take their names because they may not be well prepared for it. I have mentioned these in my videos and if you have gone through the videos, you would know how to bring students who are reticent or shy back into the group discussion. You could raise a question. When you're finishing your point, you could look into their eye, rest your gaze upon them so that they know that this is their chance to talk. So this is something which you can do. Otherwise, it has to be an internal decision whether you wish to talk or you don't wish to talk. However, the preparation for group discussion and interview skills begins much earlier. Students, the soft skills course has been initiated in order to set in a practice. We want you to perform well in your GDs. We want you to do well in your interviews. But for that, you need to work on your communication skills. I did say that when it is the content, you think that you are in the know of the topic, but it is the language which is inhibiting you, you must still go ahead requesting the permission. But honestly speaking, most of the corporate, uh, most of the organizations have English as their medium of work. And that is why it becomes very important for you all to improve upon that language. And it is not just that it is the need of the day. Think it as you are gaining knowledge of another la language. It is always good to know several languages. So it should not start talking, chit-chatting in the language in which you would be giving your group discussion or your interview. When we talk of group discussions, there was one point raised, how does a leader emerge in a group? Anywhere. You know, there is another concept which is known as the apple concept, A-P-P-L-E. So in a group discussion, the leader would perhaps perform the role of asking, then he would participate, he would probe, choose the participant, then he would listen to the participant another participant and then he would explore the idea. So what he is doing is he's exploring it from all sides, he's tying things up and the person who ties things up is actually or rather emerges as the leader. Group discussion is not a debate. You are generally marked on your knowledge content, on your communication skills, your leadership skills. So please go back to the videos that have been recorded just for you all and Try to assimilate as much knowledge as you can from there. We are there for you. So if there is any query, we would definitely handle them. Now we move on to the interview skills. And when we talk about the interview skills, what comes to your mind? Let's go to some center. Hi, Bansal Institute of Lucknow. How was the tea? Good morning, ma'am. My morning. name is Akansha. Ma'am, actually, I'm the coordinator of this course. And firstly, I would like to thank you for conducting such course, which is going to be beneficial for the students and help them to build confidence in them. And now I would like to hand over the mic to my students. They have certain points to say on this topic. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Now, my question is that if we are in a stress interview and we don't know how to keep our mind calm. OK. Thank you. I got it. So the question raised by one of our centers in Lucknow is in a stress interview, how should we keep our calm? First and foremost, congratulations if you are in a stress interview. They normally give you a stress interview when they see the potential in you. So if you handle it 
properly and if you have maintained your calm and answered the questions right, you are definitely selected. Now coming back to your question, how to be calm? Now there could be that the questions are being fired one after the another. This is one chance. There could be that they deliberately raise their tone in such a way, modulate their tone in such a way that you feel offended that you feel whether you should be answering that you feel that they're making a mockery out of you it is not that they have not seen you before they have not met you before so why would they make a mockery of you why would they want to see uh, put you under stress they want to put you under stress simply to know how you would act so let us suppose after answering one question after another your patience level or maybe your you all kids so even the maturity level, you feel that it is failing you. You would have gone through my slides and I have mentioned very clearly out there. It is not whether you know the answer or not always. It is how you approach a particular question which matters over there. Many a times, you know what happens? They would be asking questions and they would be going a notch higher. Okay? So if you do not know, if you have answered three questions in the same segment pretty well, or if they have seen you approaching that problem in the right way, direction they would perhaps move on to some other question because they have assessed that you are going in the right direction so it is how you approach a problem there could be that you are going in a diametrically opposite way but over there there would be questions that they are not expected you to answer but the way you logically progress be it on a notepad or be it through your um, answers they would assess that you have a logical bent of mind so that is more important in an interview. We are not supposed to know everything, are we? But yes, of course, on the content side, the courses that you have done, if it is mentioned, you ought to know what you have done. Any other question? Yes, ma'am, I have a question. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. My name is Prakram Misra. Yes, suppose that a question has been asked by the interviewer and uh, I am not compatible with that answer. So what I should do? Well, uh, a question has been raised by the remote center that the interviewer has asked a question and the interviewee is not comfortable with the answer. I'm going to ask the interviewee what he means by not comfortable. Is it that you do not know the answer or is it that you have forgotten the answer? It's not coming to you then. It is different. The two things are different. And let us suppose that uh, I, I don't know the answer exactly. The question has been asked by the interviewer. Now what? So that condition, what I said. Now, what happens in this condition? When you do not know the question exactly, in that condition, you could just tell him that you have done that, it's not coming to you in the mind. So, what the examiner will, will do then is, they normally try to give you a clue. They help you out with the answers. If you do not know it at all, and yet, just to show, you say that, oh, well, it's not coming to my mind right now. And even after the examiner is prodding, you do not show any logical progression on the question, then there is a problem. So if you do not know the answer completely, you have not heard about it, let the examiner know that you have no clue. It is wasting time because the que next question which comes to you might give you a chance to explain things better. So that is why I say do not beat around the bush. But if you know something, you have forgotten, you may have done it in the first semester, this is your fourth semester and you have not, you don't remember it, perhaps at the prodding, you would remember something. So don't fake it, okay? Thank you very much, Lucknow. Let's move on to some different center. Hi, Kolum. How are things? Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Yeah, I'll give the mic to the students. Students, before you really raise a question, tell me the three most dreaded questions from your side. The group discussion. I didn't have enough time to prepare a question for um, interviews, but for group discussion, I had a question. It was... Um, when we're in a group discussion, should we be selfish and just think about ourselves first and take as much time as we need? Or should we also think about the rest and think about, uh, rationalize and give time to uh, everyone to speak? You know, when we that talk about, question. well, we have already handled that question previously because group discussion means the ideas must be explored by the entire group, okay? So we should not be doing the talking all the time, right? So we should see that we get the fair share of talking and at the same time, the rest of the group also comes up with points and builds on it. Fine, dear? So now tell me, now tell me, yes. since you do not have any question on interview skills, 
tell me two questions that the students dread in an interview. Okay, you may take the help of your friends. Good afternoon, ma'am. I would assume the questions that you're expecting, one of them would be, what are your faults or demerits in your life or in your character? Okay. Probably the other one would be to uh, describe yourself in a sentence or in two words. Uh, not in two words. I would say, tell me something about yourself, which happens to be the very first question. Thank you so much for reading my mind. Are you a mind reader? Not currently. Not, but you used to be? Oh, well, I should meet you sometime face to face. Okay. I think you have given a direction to the interview skills. So the very first question most of the students dread is, tell me something about yourself. So what happens is, when you are asked, despite the fact that you know that this will be the first question, when you are there, you tend to rattle. You tend to forget what you wish to say. You do not know whether you should be talking about your background, how much you should be talking about your background. Do not give more than two minutes to that particular question. Because students remember, acing an interview is an art. When you go for that interview, whatever you have put on your resume, might frame a question whatever you say as an answer whichever word you use in an answer might frame a question so just be very careful how you introduce yourself if in your introduction you happen to say that you have been um, you loved learn tennis or you loved swimming so the question would be who was the national champion not that you should not be saying but you should be saying it in such a way that even if a question is raised and you do not know the answer who the national champion is or who the international olympic champion is it wouldn't have much impact on the interview if it is tell me something about yourself at your level i was just wondering how to make it easy for you so what came to my mind is and my experience with the students have yielded the result as no matter what we say you would go back to the background you would say where you were born where you were brought up so it is and most of you have this understanding that if you have nailed the first question you are confident enough so you feel that if you are bailed out of that first question you are confident enough to tackle other questions so remember students for the question tell me something about yourself go by this module it, it is just b-a-l-e it could be b-a-i-l it should be so you could find an acronym for these things now what you could do is you could begin with where you were born and brought up and then move on to your academics i was born and brought up here i did my engineering from here these are the things i love this is my inspiration and these are the things i love so this would suffice in an for the introduction so now if you ask me tell me something about yourself suddenly and if i'm unprepared i would say oh well i'm dr Lena Jha. i did my undergrads from here and i did my post grad from here and i did my phd from here and um, well i love teaching i love to swim i love interacting with people and uh, my passion is to write poetry so I could just talk about this way. Now, if I have come prepared, perhaps I would come, I would talk about my introduction in this manner. Students, I want your focus now. I have given you one pitch of introduction. I'm going to give you another pitch of introduction. See how concisely by preparing it, we can really ace the first question. Tell me something about yourself. A master's in English from JNU and a PhD from Bihar University introduced me to the polarities in the academic environment and sensitized me to the discrepancies in the social firmament. My interaction with corporate houses and technical institutes has sensitized me and helped me analyze the areas of prime concern. Since I know the areas of prime concern, I work around those areas and these provide a healthy dimension to my sessions. My career is devoted to encouraging enthusiastic learning and I stay in Mumbai. So this would be a more concise form of introduction. What I did was I talked about my academic qualification and how it has helped me in my field. So 
Prepare your answers. Do not mug it up, but rehearse. When you prepare, you draft, you redraft, you recast. And then comes the solid introduction. So do that. Another question that was uh, mentioned here was, what are your strengths and weaknesses? When we talk about our strengths and weaknesses, there has been a trend that you present one of your strengths as a weakness and then come back saying that, well, this is what I'm doing. Normally, you know this question is going to come. So do a SWOT analysis of yourself. What is SWOT analysis? Normally, it's a term used in uh, corporate houses and industries in order to Find out what is the strength, the weakness, the opportunities and the threats. So you could actually, before getting into an interview, you should start the preparation with a SWOT analysis of yourself. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the opportunities you are looking for? And what acts as a threat in acing the brand you are targeting? So when you will work around that, okay, you would know what your weaknesses, what is threatening you. So you can come up with your weakness and then you could talk about how you are trying to combat it, how successful you have been, has there been any result. What you could also do is you could just present a past experience wherein you suddenly learned that you, your patience level is very low. So that thing did not work out well for you because it was a patience level that impacted it. So now you are working on that patience level. So now when you come up with this particular story, this particular experience you share this experience the panel feels takes you as a person who is honest has integrity so this is how you should answer tell us something about yourself and your strength and weaknesses and now let me go to some uh, center and let's take their question now rbr jc college andhra pradesh welcome back may i have your question please my name is ravi teja ma'am okay ravi teja coming to my question how to create the positive psychological impact on the members of the panel how to become a leader in the discussion? My very dear friend, Ravi Teja, we've just answered the second part of your question. We said the apple technique, wherein you ask, you probe, you choose a particip participant, then you listen and then you explore, makes you, helps you emerge as a leader. Okay, but now we are talking about interview skills and I really loved the question you raised, which is how to utilize pause to make an impact on the interview panelists. Okay, so we are moving into the realm of uh, vocalics as well as kinesics, which is body language. So now what happens, let us suppose, why do I say that voice modulation is a very important aspect of any communication? Now, let us suppose the moderator, you know, he's asked you enough questions on content on what you have studied and he feels that he should ask you more about your hobbies and somewhere in your hobby you have written that you love football so he asks you which club do you follow and you say Manchester United so now when you say Manchester United he would definitely ask questions about Manchester United it could be that he himself is a follower of Manchester United and that is why he asked you this question or he could be in opposition he could be Arsenal fan so now what happens when you answer questions over here right? They are not looking for the right answer. They definitely are. You cannot, uh, you know, play with facts and figures. But they want to gauge your passion level. So perhaps when you are answering the questions, you would raise your voice a little bit, which shows your engagement. And once you have done it, and once you have made a fantastic point about the topics you are saying, you need to pause. When you pause, you need to look in the eye, into the eye of your panelists. Maybe you could look into the, into the eye of the panelists to address the question and then step back. So this is how you would utilize pause to create an impact. Does that suffice? Does that satisfy your answer? Was the answer helpful? Ma yes, ma'am. Ma'am, what is the difference between co-curricular activities and curricular activities? Curricular activities, curricular comes from the word curriculum. So whatever you are doing, studying out there, whatever is in the course would be the course and extracurricular activities would be whatever extra things that you are doing out there. So sports maybe, if it is not a part of your regular regime, the drama, we have drama clubs, we have sports club, we have quiz clubs, we have event management clubs, we have so many clubs in the colleges. So those would be the extracurricular activities. Now what happens is, 
normally students put that in their resume. Now, when you put that in the resume, you should know that you shouldn't be a passive member of that group. If you have put it on your resume that you were the leader or the head of this particular club, you need to tell exactly, you need to have the facts and figures ready as to what events did you conduct. And if you can give them a financial implication, this was the money which we handled and this is how we handled so many things. These are the personalities we had called for this particular function. This would make a better impact rather than saying that I was the head of this particular thing. I was a member of this particular group. What exactly you did out there is what will make the difference. So since we are already at it, students, um, let me again get a question for you, which is, or rather I would wait, we'll go to some other institute now. We have a flurry of questions coming up. It's all read. I just hope I'm able to answer your queries. Techno India, Hello, West Bengal. Ma'am, ma I just have a question. Uh, in the interview, if someone asks, why should I hire, hire oh. you? So mm -hmm. what would be our answer? You know what, students? You need to be, interview is not something wherein you get in and you give an interview. You need to prepare for an interview. So if somebody asks you, why should I hire you? You should be prepared with that answer. What is the difference that you would make, you would bring to the table for them? Now here what happens, you might just keep on saying, I am a, a very good orator, I am very hard working, I am energetic, I am enthusiastic, I love to learn. You might just say all these things, but there would be other students from your own college who would be saying the similar, the same things. So then again, they would come back, okay, the rest of them would say the same things. Again, tell me, why should we hire you? So in this question, for this question, what you could do is you could always tell them about one experience that you may have had, something which you may have done that shows that you are a strong personality and you would bring a novelty, some creativity to the team. So what you could do is, you know, we call it star technique. So this would also, this star technique would also work if they ask you, what was your job out there? What did you do before joining this company, right? So it would hold water for both. So in this star technique, what you really do is you put the situation out there, you develop a situation or you bring a situation from the past and then you tell them what exactly you did out there. What action, what action was required? What task was required to be done? What action you took and what were the results? So now what you have done, you have given them a practical demonstration of your personality. There is no hiding behind adjectives. So once you have given them a practical side of your action through the STAR technique, I'm going to revisit it. STAR is situation, task, action, result. Frame your answer for the question, why should we hire you or what did you do previously in your previous job? Frame your question around this module. Does that suffice, West Bengal? Thanks, ma'am. And one more question. Hello. Uh, yes. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Ma'am, uh, like I'm a pressure, I have no work experience. Mm -hmm. And if the interviewer asks me mm -hmm. uh, that what salary do you expect? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So what is the best answer that uh, I should give? As a pressure, you would definitely have um, tried to find out what the salary is, right? But as a fresher, there is absolutely no need to negotiate or talk about it. So what your answer should be? Your answer should go around the learning process. So I'm still a fresher and I'm exploring the avenue. I have gone through the vision and the mission of this company and I appreciate what is being done there. To be a part of this company in itself it would be a very big thing for me. And of course, we have, everybody loves money. And we would have a salary structure in your company also. So I'm sure you would give me the best. If you want to hire me, if you wish, if you think that I'm suitable for this job, you would definitely give me the best. Thank you very much, sir. Thank okay. Ma'am, ma'am, but still, if, if the interviewer asks me for a, a figure, then uh -huh. uh, should I directly uh, tell him the, the actual figure that I'm expecting or should I just uh, cover up the question or what should I do? Means if uh, he still asks for the figure, the amount. There is a risk involved, okay? 
it could be that your expectation is maybe at 3 lakhs or maybe at 6 lakhs, maybe at 10 lakhs. Once you join the company, you realize that somebody is there at a 15 lakh in your position. So there are two things. If you are anticipating that there would be a question on money matters, in that case, explore, try finding out from the seniors out there, what is the salary structure out there. You know, we have to prepare for certain questions. Not certain, in fact, we have to prepare for most of the questions that are being asked in an interview. That is one thing. And second thing, what you could say is, so it should be like if you do not wish to uh, name a figure as as in your language covering up you could say so it should be such that i stick around for a longer period of time and i don't feel frustrated as it is i'm a fresher and you would know best okay yes ma'am ma can i ask one more question okay please go ahead this would be the last from your center okay if the interviewer asks why have you applied in this particular company why not in some other company or why are you interested in this company only so what should I answer? Or maybe if the interviewer asks that, do you find any negative points uh, in the company? So what should be the answer? Okay, lovely. So the question which has been raised by uh, one of the sweetest state, West Bengal, is uh, why you want to join this company? So for this particular question, you know, I'm going to give you again another acronym, which I just thought of last night. Work around it. So it would be G O A L. So for the question, why should you, why would you like to work for this company? You could just come up and say that because it has a great brand image, first and foremost, you're trying to pump the company. Or perhaps your company comes across as a goal driven company, which is what I look forward to. G offers opportunity. O. G O offers opportunity. Your company offers us immense opportunity. A, it values the three A's. It appreciates the three A's. The aptitude, the attitude, and it helps us achieve the altitude. And L would be, it is a logical culmination of my vision. It's a logical culmination of what I wish to do in life. Now, if you go and do it in, in this order, if you do it in this, you know, rote manner, it would look as though I have tutored all of you, all 19,000, 20,000 who have registered for the course. So it should not be, it should be your personality reflecting it, but then this could be around these lines. So derive an acronym for yourself and how you are going to talk about this. So if they ask you why this company, you could say all of these points. There could be several other points as well. Is that okay? Thank you so much, ma'am. Very are. Velour, welcome back. Any question here? Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Kartikeyan. I'm the course coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, Lovely. We are from Velour, Tamil Nadu. One of my students has a doubt to get clarified from you, ma'am. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. I attend one, one interview. The okay. interviewer asked, uh, asked for a question for me. So properly, up, interview is properly going on. Mm -hmm. But the interviewer suddenly asked, Ask me, you are useless fellow, you are not beautiful, you are not perfect. At that, that time, how do I react? Uh, and what happened later? Were you selected? What was the feedback that you received? This was a kind of stress interview. How did you handle it? You, I would like to know, how did you handle it? I immediately cried. You cried over there. Okay, I'm really sorry and I do apologize, you know, whosoever that person may have been because it should not have come so, it should not have come at all. Normally, when we, this was a kind of stress interview, dear. This was a kind of stress interview. So normally, when people come across, there are two things. Again, when I talk about stress interview, there are two things. Rather than crying, you should have walked out if it felt so bad. Okay? But at the same time, you should have said, if, if somebody comes like that and talks directly, and you feel that it is kind of an abuse, there are two alternatives that you could take. You could always say, so being useless, so ugly and useless, they have use in you and ugly must be a, definitely it must have some use and that is why it is in the English dictionary or it would have been kicked out. You know, something to that effect. But students, I love you all dearly. And there is one thing which I would want to point out. Never cry in an interview. They will bring you to the level, some of them could bring you to that level. They could bring tears to your eyes. But it is a kind of stress interview, okay? And the moment they would say that you are at the brink, they would again come up with something comfortable. It is just that they are trying 
you may have come across as a very confident person and they are now testing your limits. It should not be done in the manner it has been done. But however, even during adversity, even during such things, maintain a poker face, just smile. Perhaps you could also say, sir, it would be much appreciated if we, if we could keep the discussion, if we, could, if we could keep the interview at the professional level. So when you say something, like, I'm trying to give you words because, you know, in stress interviews, these words come handy. So when you talk about this, the interviewers know that, well, he will only take up to this limit. Post that, he's going to react. He doesn't care for the job. He's not desperate. Okay, so may I know your name, please? The person who had asked the question. Three, there. You know what? You should feel empowered that you were able to sit for that stress interview. Okay? And I don't want to see you crying ever again. Never again. Promise me you'll never cry again for an interview. And if it hurts, if in any interview it hurts so much, you should just pick up your folder and walk out with a thank you. Okay? But otherwise, my suggestion would be do not get stressed. If there is water, drink it and then tell them, Sir, I would appreciate if we can stay at professional levels. Okay, does that satisfy you? Does that make you happy? Yes, ma'am, I happy and satisfied. Lovely, lovely, dear. We'll move to some other sense. Oh, Excuse we me, have a question? Okay. This is Ignesh. I have a doubt and a panel interview session. Okay. There are four or five members uh, asking questions to a person. So, whom should I answer first? That is again another kind of answer. So, you know what you could do? You should just smile at the panel, okay? And let us suppose there is huh? one familiar face. There is one face who is passion, who is, who is, you know, kind of, uh, you feel you can gel with. So perhaps you can look at that face and then say, may I take your answer first? May I take your question first? Or this is one method. The second could be, you could just ask the panelist, would you allow me to answer this question first? And then we could move in a logical progression. Third would be, so how do I go about answering these questions? Which one should I take first? So they would obviously say, oh well, anybody. So choose a face who you think is relatively calm and supportive. Answer from there. Is that okay? Okay, ma'am. Okay, dear. Question, ma'am. Tell me, go about it. Uh, is personality skills uh, more important than other skills, ma'am? Uh, with By personality, you mean the communication skills? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, dear. So normally in the selection process, what I'm, the question right now raised was, do personality matter in uh, interviews? What happens is, when a company walks in, they would have taken an assessment test. They would have filtered students on the basis of their aptitude, a written test on an aptitude. Then they have a round of group discussion. Post that when they come for the interview, most of the students who have made to the interviews would be at the same level. So knowledge wise, most of you could be at the same level. The way you would answer a question, the way you would approach a question logically, all these things perhaps may be more or less the same. So it is then when communication starts to play a major role. I wouldn't say that communication skills is the most important thing in an interview, but communication, having a good communication skill certainly helps in an interview. You need to have a good knowledge base. Your content should be great. Post that if I'm getting a wonderful personality who can, who is able to translate his thought into words effectively, will definitely be my candidate. And therefore, polish on your personality. So it is not a very difficult thing to do. And that is why it is a skill. It is a life skill. It is a communication skill. We develop personalities. Another question, ma'am. Okay, this will be the last from the center right now. Please go ahead. During group discussion, we don't have an idea about the topic, how to manage it. We had talked about this. Were you there for the first session? Tell me, I need to pull you all up now. Were you there for the first session? We talked about the pestle concept and there is enough material on my slides. So if there is a question and you do not know much about it, try to think about it politically, socially, economically, technically, environmentally and legally. So from somewhere you would definitely get points. I'm not going to dwell upon this particular question right now. We are handling interview skills. Okay. Thank you, Kartikayan. Mapko, Tamil Nadu. Hello. Good afternoon, dear. Our student has some questions. Oh, yeah. Sure, we'll tackle it. Uh, 
Happy noon, ma'am. Rajalakshmi from Akkosha Language Engineering College. Yes, Rajalakshmi, go ahead. I have a doubt on uh, GD. So, if I have uh, more than one point to talk, and uh, should I have to, uh, once I rise up, uh, should I have to talk all the points, whatever I know? Well, again, we have a question from GD, and uh, she wants to know whether we should talk about all the points that we have in one go. Well, if you talk about all the points that you have in one go, what would you do for the next of the GD? So your most important points, maybe if you have eight points, make two points, three points at the mats. If you are a group of eight people and you feel that you cannot, you will not get a chance. So not more than two to three points in one entry. You could come back again and make points as well as built on other person's point. Okay, I'm not going to dwell on this for longer because we have to tackle so many questions on interview skills as well. I hope it has been satisfactory, the answer to your question. Raj Lakshmi? Uh, I have another one question regarding the interview. Okay. What kind of uh, homework should we do or pre-preparation should we do you know, before we face a headshot? Should we have to take some like uh, mirror practice or what kind of practice should have to perform? You brought in an extremely important point, mirror practice. Yes, that has to be there. You know, for the preparation of an interview, as I said, we have to prepare for GDs and interviews for a longer period of time if we really wish to ace it and get the best uh, company. So for interviews, get a set of normal questions. There are 10 to 12 questions, 15 questions. Get those questions, especially the, uh, the ones which you know they would ask. Prepare answers to them. Do not memorize them, but you should know them well. And every word in that answer that you are going to talk about, every expression will lead to another question. So just be careful of what expressions you are putting in your answers. So once you have prepared, you're not comfortable, you're not confident about what kind of body language you are displaying in an interview. So what you could do, some of you could get into a group and have mock interviews, not just mock interviews. You should record those mock interviews. Have somebody who would record that mock interviews for you. So then your body language, and it should not be just chit chat. It should be held, done, conducted in a professional manner. In fact, you could get suited booted for your interviews and then go for those mock interviews. So then what happens to your body language when you watch them in the video? You would realize what you have to do and what you don't have to do. What happens here is when you work in groups, you develop a team concept. When you're working together, you want everybody to be selected. So that feeling that you would evolve through these group activities, both through mock GDs and through mock interviews, you know, will go a long way in getting selected, perhaps as a team by the companies. So when we get into these interviews, now there could be a question. So that person sitting outside, person who was interviewed before you, he came as a very good candidate. So why should not we hire him? Why should we hire you? So over there, you could be tempted to, you know, play down his activities. Do not ever do that. Okay? They are just trying to gauge how good a team player you are. Okay? Have you answered your question? Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, dear. Go ahead with your question. I'm Priyanka. Hi Priyanka, go ahead with you. Um, actually, I have a question regarding uh, group discussion. It's a very simple question. Which is the best? Being an initiator or uh, listening, keenly listening to others, uh, the points given by others and then adding more valuable points. Because if I am an initiator, then I can easily get into the mind of the coordinator or the one who is conducting the session. And uh, also, if I am listening to others and then adding more valuable points, uh, that will also be taken into consideration. So, which is the best? How could I easily attract the coordinator? Well, dear, an initiator's position is a position of responsibility. So if you feel that you have grasped the idea about the topic and you can introduce the topic in such a way that everybody in the group would understand and will be able to analyze the topic, that you are setting in a healthy kind of setting stage for a healthy kind of group discussion, then initiate then you would definitely get into the eye of the, uh, the kind of brownie points you are looking at. But if you do not know much about the topic and you decide to just go about it, simply because you would get into the eye of the moderator, so don't, do, because it is a position of responsibility. If you have understood the topic, go ahead. If you have not, listen keenly and then make your entries at either the third level or the fourth level. Not an issue. 
normally students perception that if I do this, I'm going to get this point. If I do this, I'm going to this, uh, get this point. If I conclude, I will be taken as a leader. If I initiate, I have the chances to be a leader. Yes, of course. But then all these activities are not seen in isolation. The moderator sees you as a whole human being. How you have interacted, what is your knowledge quotient, what is your emotional quotient, what is your communication skill, how have you interacted with the group members. All these things are seen and all these things at a smaller level is there in the interview skills when you are interacting with your panel interviewers. Is that okay? Good afternoon ma'am. Good afternoon. Please. I'm Mahesh Singh. I have a question on interview. Please While please. I'm going for an interview, we have been taught that be like a professional, whether it is important or uh, the dressing sense, uh, the way we answer, everything Mahesh. we answer, they say uh, it mm. must be in a professional way, whether it is important or uh, being myself when I'm answering it, whether it is important, in your perspective. Being yourself is actually important, but being yourself in a professional manner is what we are looking for. Okay, we cannot fake things. So when you talk about dressing up, how would you, I mean, if I wore, if for an Indian wedding, I go wearing something really black and messy, will that look good? No. If for this face-to-face -face interaction, if I had worn the wedding finery, would that have looked good? So every place, every condition, every situation demands a decorum. And that decorum is to bring the rest of the members on the same page. It is not an enforcement. It is something which helps all the members get on the same page. So if we go for an interview, it is better that we wear our suits, we wear our tie, because that is the demand of most of the organization. We are dressed in our formals. Now, if you have to attend a media interview, perhaps the panelists may also be in their shorts. So over there, your dress could be something casual but for a corporate interview or for the government bodies we must give an appearance of being formal because with formality we can discard so many things we can calm down and we can think in the direction which we need to okay have have we answered the question properly good afternoon ma'am i am subalakshmi from uh, mepco shlank engineering college mm -hmm. i have a question uh, that uh, during interviews in some of the companies, they'll be asking uh, at the end, do you have any questions to post to us? And what kind of questions can we ask to them, ma'am? You know, at your level, what you could do is, you know, that's a very important segment. And if they ask you, and if there has been something in your mind, please go ahead. What you should do is, if you are going for a company's interview, read their vision and the mission statements. So that vision and the mission statement could help you frame a question. Another thing that you could do is you could ask them, how would you see me post three years? What are the growth prospects in the next three years? This is something which you can ask them. You could also ask them that does the company encourage people to go for their MBAs? How important is an MBA for this particular institution or for this particular company? So if so now they would ask you whether you intend to do an MBA. So over there, you could say learning process over here is such that I don't need to. And I, I, and I see my growth prospects here. Perhaps I might not need to. But that is a call which I will have to take after two years with your inputs. Okay. Thank you very much, dear. We'll now move to the other center. Hello. Good afternoon. Please go ahead with Hello, your question. We have a couple of queries from this remote center. Oh, lovely. Please go ahead. It's such a fantastic Hello? bunch of people. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. The first query goes on here. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, dear. Go ahead. Ma'am, I would like to ask the question that uh, how should someone mentally prepare uh, himself before appearing for the interview? The question which has just been asked is how should we mentally prepare ourselves for the interview? A very good question. Thank you so much for, for raising this question. Because you know what? Before an interview, we are normally stressed. We want to ace it and we wish to enter the room with the feeling that we have to ace it. And in that stress, perhaps we get a little nervous. Always remember that interview is again another step in your life, but a major step for which you need to prepare. So as I have said, first, you need to mentally prepare yourself. When I talk about mentally preparing yourself, it is not that you should be goading yourself. I have my interviews on this day. I have my interview on this day. No. In fact, on the contrary, you should be working around 
calming yourself. Okay, I have this plan A, I am looking for this company and I'll go prepared with these kind of answers. These kind of answers match with my personality and I should be talking about these things. So when you have thought about what's there in your resume and you have explored the questions that are usually asked, you are mentally relaxed, which is very important for an interview. You should not go thinking, what if I do not ace this interview? There is always a second chance. Students, I would like to point out that if you do not ace an interview, it is not the end of the road. It does not augur bad on you. It is not that because you did not perform well. Most of the time, it is not that because you did not perform well that you are not in. Maybe on that particular occasion, the company needed somebody with another set of skills and experience. And that is why another person was selected. Work on your communication skills. Some of us are not very comfortable with speaking in English. So this has to be a long term preparation. We must start preparation on English, on our, on our language, on our communication skills. We must get into groups and start working around it because most of us have the desire to go abroad, to work in multinationals, to work at a global platform. So in order to work at a global platform, this is the time to begin with the preparation. And for this, it has to begin from here. Mentally, you have to steel yourself against all the temptations and say, no, I have to work towards making towards my personality. I have to work towards building a new me or building an, an improved me. So that is something which you must do. But if you do not ace it, it is not the end of the world. There is something better lying for you. Yes, ma'am. Ma we have another question. Can you relate to the answer that has just been given? Can you and the rest of the people relate to the answer that has just been given? Yes, ma'am. The answer is satisfactory. Oh, it is satisfactory. It is not good. So my dear, yes, so do you all promise me to make yourself, do you all promise me to strengthen your mental capabilities and gear up for the interviews? Okay, all those who promise me, please raise your hands. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you. I have aced it. So do we have any other query from here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so other person may please uh, raise the question. You may sit down, please. You don't have Good to get up. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Ma'am, um, I wanted to ask. If I'm in an interview and the interviewer suddenly turns the tables and asks me to uh, pose questions, what kind of questions should I ask? Uh, we've just answered, remote, this remote center has just asked us what kind of questions should we ask from the interview panel if we are asked to do so. So I had mentioned that we should go to the interview post reading the vision and the mission of the company because that gives us an opportunity to ask Question. Second thing could be you could ask about your prospect in that company post two years or three years. Third thing you could also talk about what is how does the company see the MBA degree? How important is the MBA degree for the company and does the company has any tie up with any of the institutes? So what would be the prospect post two years? Okay. So these are the kind of you could ask questions relating what is the work atmosphere over there. So you could ask questions relating to your career growth in that company. I'd like to know what are the common trick questions asked and how should we answer them without creating a negative impact? We have handled this uh, question and I said for uh, the first question is normally apart from telling us something about yourself. They would say in the tell us something about yourself. They might just say talk something which is not there in your resume. So perhaps something which may have made an impact on you in your life and gave a dimension to your life, you could quote that incident out there. Fine. There could be talk about yourself in five words, right? What if we do not hire you? So these are the trick questions which they might just ask. So you just have, you know, prepare the regular 10 to 15 questions. They should match with your personality. Rehearse them mirror practice them, use them in the mock interviews and most of the trick questions would be, you know when they ask you trick questions, they are not looking for a right answer. They are looking for how you are approaching the question. Always bear that in mind. Okay, so they wish to see the logical bent of mind, the creativity out there. Okay, thank you very much. It was a pleasure interacting with you. We'll go to the next center. I will take a couple of questions from Roland Institute. Orissa. Oh, wow, Orissa. Roland Institute. I love the Sambalpuri saris from there. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Please go ahead with the question. 
we have little time now so we'd like to make most of it good afternoon ma'am good afternoon please go ahead my simple question is that i am a civil engineer so my simple question is i mean an it interview hmm. i'm basically in civil engineer they hmm. asked me a question why civil engineer what answer i will give what answer did you give did you give any answer my answer that uh, i am uh, good in a programming language that uh, due to some problem counselor had given me the civil engineering had you been a mechanical right, given that the counselor had given me that civil engineer yes so had you been a mechanical engineer or any any uh, have you followed any other stream the question would have been the same so it is basically why civil engineering because i thought i was interested in it could be that i could not get it could be a very simple thing that i could not get it and therefore i did civil engineering because civil engineering of course is again it helps in building the infrastructure of the country so now i have an idea about civil engineering and i have a keen interest in the it sector on both when i bring both on the table i'm sure i'll create something wonderful okay so your answer should be to the tune of this uh, we'll take another center we'll take two more questions hi good afternoon srm we'll take two quick questions hi ma'am this is jashwant i have a curious question please go ahead with your question i'm usually when we uh, go for an interview like the interviewers they observe everything like the way we get inside the way we talk the way we present ourselves so out of all this i just wanted to know that you please tell me like maintaining proper eye contact with the interviewer well the question is on eye contact and uh, perhaps uh, we have a question how should we maintain eye contact with the interviewer when you are asking when somebody has asked you a question it is important that you maintain an eye contact with the person however if you keep staring back at the interviewer somehow in some culture it does not go well what you could do is when you are answering the question you look into the eye of the person if the answer gets too long perhaps you could break the eye contact for a second but honestly speaking if you are passionate about it and you are working directly into the answer there is you should keep on maintaining the eye contact out there thank you ma'am thanks for the effort just okay last question sri narayana institute kerala hello please go directly into the question well participants it has been really very interesting interacting with you all and um, it would be much appreciated if you would i hope you all have gone through the slides and you have appeared for the quizzes as well please go to through the slides please do the quizzes and come back with more questions we at this side are working very hard for you all and we expect the same from you all so if you are really geared into acing group discussion and interview skills you must start the preparation now and we have professor sethi may i please invite professor sethi to the discussion now because with his energy level he's definitely going to charge you all up hi everybody i've been in the background while you guys have been having uh, discussions and insights into group discussions and interviews etc there are two things that i want to share before we close for the day we got another 5 minutes so we'll close at 1 o'clock and then for the lunch break and then 2 o'clock we begin with the workplace communication module the first question i have is how many of you need to answer this question but you know at a, at the level of the center at the level of the coordinators the question i need to deal with is how many of you have already registered into the iit bombay x i believe there's almost like 25 30% of you who have not registered now if you haven't registered a large part of the resources that are available through iit bombay x will not be available to you so it's important that you uh, register and start doing the work okay so for every face to face Uh, for every week there is a video or some kind of resource material that's available and then there is a quiz so till you don't answer the quizzes so quizzes are simple they're not complicated they're just intended so that it keeps you uh, in tra- you know, keeps you on track with regard to what is the expectation has you be a little familiar so you get to see our faces before you meet with us on face to face so do the work i think the real work is not in this face to face the real work is happening where you are so when you know professor fatak this morning you know when he said and you know professor lena jha said that you need to be making small groups and working on your own uh, so that the practice can take place without that it will not uh, have be as effective at all so you know if you think that we can listen to a lecture on how to ride a bicycle that will give you no access to riding a bicycle so you want to be able to get onto the bicycle yourself as soon as you get onto the bicycle you will fall a few times 
So I don't want you to go to the interview uh, or to a group discussion for the first time and find out how much you are paralyzed because you're afraid. Get paralyzed ahead of time. Get afraid ahead of time so that you know how to deal with it. Don't be taken by surprise with your own body reacting a particular way when you are in an interview. So this has to be done ahead of time. You got to practice, practice, practice. And when you've practiced enough, a point will come when you don't have to be worried about you know, the interview. You don't have to be worried about the group discussion. Who you are there is yourself. And you know the person who is familiar with what is expected, how to honor other people, how to honor yourself. And then things begin to you know, happen on their own naturally. You don't have to kind of practice for a group discussion. You don't have to practice for that becomes a part of your, you know, it's like second nature to you. So would you please do the work that's required? You know, we can only encourage you. We can only give you resource materials. We can only give you things that we have learned from our experience. And but you know, working very hard. we are working we very are hard. Working very yeah. Hard. And I just want you to know that it's very enjoyable too. We are loving doing it. So there's no issue about right. the hard work. We love hard it. Work. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, would you please, you know, uh, I'd like to see, so uh, Mahindra, how many people at this point in time in this course? So, about 6,000 students have not registered online. So, this is my appeal to all the coordinators to please make sure that, you know, we're not doing this partially. Full value of uh, the work will not become available if you don't participate fully, okay? We don't want to overload you every week. You already are busy, but that one or two hours that are required for it, Please put it in because, you know, that will develop the mind, that will develop the muscle, that will develop your, uh, you as a person so that you can actually be, you know, comfortable in, uh, for an interview or for group discussion or for life itself, okay. And that's it. That's all I want to say. I want to thank you, Professor Lena, for your, the, I was in the background much. listening. I was also seeing it on the YouTube. So, I was a participant myself and, uh, you know, you look to see uh, Professor Fatak also, you know, shared some things outside as to, uh, what are the things that, so he said, and this is, I just want to share it because it touched me. He said, if as a group you have succeeded, then everybody would have succeeded. That for me is a message to take for group discussions. And uh, so if you have an eye on making sure that everybody in the group wins, everybody gets a chance to contribute, everybody gets a chance to participate, then you are somebody I would want to hire on my team. All right, so thank you very much and please enjoy your lunch and we'll see you at about two o'clock. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.